In this video, we will consider a measure of the energy of a fluid flow, called fluid head. Fluid head can be used to determine many important effects in internal flows, such as pumping requirements or friction losses. Let's start with a given fluid state, specified by the velocity, pressure, and elevation. For an incompressible fluid, the density is specified and constant. The fluid head is the maximum height that the flow can reach, starting at state 1. Remember, this is a conceptual measurement of the fluid's energy, not an actual process that the fluid will experience. We define a system for this conceptual process that involves flow from the initial state along a streamline to a final state at elevation 2. The process is lossless, and the fluid velocity is 0 at z2. The system boundary is chosen to be an infinitesimally small control volume around the streamline. We write the mass balance for this steady flow and see that the mass flow remains constant. That is, m.1 is equal to m.2. Next, we write the energy balance. The flow is steady, has no heat transfer, and no work. We can divide out the mass flows because the mass flow at station 1 is equal to the mass flow at station 2. Next, we substitute the definition for specific enthalpy H, which is equal to U plus PV, where V is the specific volume. Remember that the specific volume is just 1 divided by the density. Substituting, we have the specific internal energy at station 1, plus the pressure at station 1 divided by the density, plus the velocity at station 1 squared over 2, plus the acceleration due to gravity times the elevation at 1, minus all of the same terms at station 2. For an incompressible substance with no losses, we can show that the specific internal energies remain constant, and so they cancel. Simplifying, we see the pressure at station 1 divided by the density, plus the velocity at station 1 squared divided by 2, plus the acceleration due to gravity times the elevation at station 1, and all of this is equal to the same terms at station 2. This result is the familiar Bernoulli equation. We can solve this equation for the final elevation, z2. We have z2 equals p1 minus p2 divided by the density times the acceleration due to gravity plus the velocity at station 1 squared minus the velocity at station 2 squared divided by 2 times the acceleration due to gravity plus the elevation at station 1. The pressure at station 1 is equal to the gauge pressure at station 1 plus the atmospheric pressure, and the pressure at station 2 is equal to atmospheric. The difference, P1 minus P2, becomes P1 gauge. Also, the velocity at station 2 where the fluid reaches its maximum height is 0. Simplifying, we have the elevation at station 2 is equal to the gauge pressure at station 1 divided by the density times the acceleration due to gravity plus the velocity at station 1 squared divided by 2 times the acceleration due to gravity plus the elevation at station 1. By inspection, we see that the units of each term is a length. We call the elevation that the fluid could reach from a given state 1 the total head of the flow, H1. The head is a measure of the energy of the flow that can be computed at any flow station. The terms on the right-hand side represent the pressure head, the velocity head, and the elevation head of the flow at station 1. Notice that the head is a relative quantity. It depends on the elevation at station 1 relative to a reference datum. As with all measures of energy, the values are relative to a reference. 
Head is a concept that is particularly useful for internal flows, such as flows within a pipe. Let's look at the change in head for a simple flow through a pipe with a change in elevation, velocity, and pressure. At station 1, we have velocity 1, pressure 1, and elevation 1. At station 2, we have velocity 2, pressure 2, and elevation 2. For an incompressible, steady flow with no losses, work, or heat transfer, we can define a streamline for the flow. These conditions allow us to apply the Bernoulli equation. The Bernoulli equation tells us that the pressure at station 1 divided by the density plus the velocity at station 1 squared over 2 plus the acceleration due to gravity times the elevation at station 1 is all equal to the same terms at station 2. We can divide this all by the acceleration due to gravity. For no losses, work, or heat transfer, the head remained constant. H1 is equal to H2. This result is intuitive because we know that the energy of the flow is not changing under these conditions, and the head is a measure of the energy. The next question to ask ourselves is, what does change head? Two effects that can change the head of the flow are work addition, such as a pump, or friction losses. We will discuss these two effects in the next two videos. This concludes the mini lecture on fluid head. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.